Uh, the Evo 17-S from Origin PC. I don't know how much power they can keep cramming in these laptops, so today we're gonna take a look at it. It's <laughs> a lot. We interrupt this video to bring you a special message from iFixit. No, we interrupt this interruption with this interruption about new stuff from iFixit. We should even grab this card, but inventory sucks. Fix the inventory problems with iFixit. Whoa, don't drop it. Can't fix that with iFixit. Just kidding, yes you can. Wish you could take iFixit with you anywhere, but your pockets aren't big enough. Introducing the new Moray. And the new Minnow. Take them with you anywhere. So get iFixit for your loved ones, or just get them for yourself. So this is the Evo 17-S. We've got a, a 13, a 15, and a 17. I think, or 14, 15, 17. Anyway, they've got multiple sizes here. This is a 17 inch. This is like the flagship model. This one is specced out like you just, you know, when you, you know, for fun, when you go online, which by the way, you can do this also with their configurator, you go online and you say, oh, I want to just max it out. Let's just max it out for fun. That's kind of what you get here. It's a 17 inch, 1440p, uh, matte display, so you're not getting a ton of reflection, which makes it difficult on a laptop, especially if you're like out and about with it in a coffee shop or something. If it's a real bright environment, it's kind of hard to see. But this is not uh, hard to see because it's a anti-reflective material. 240 hertz, 1440p uh, IPS display. Now you might be thinking like, okay, you know, that's cool and all, but it's kind of standard. You know, laptop screens have been great for a long time. This is Intel 12th gen, it's got DDR5, 32 gigabytes of it, uh, but it's got an RTX 3080 Ti laptop GPU in here. So it's about as specced out as it can possibly get. So we do have micro SD card reader right here, two USB 3.0 on the right side. Moving around to the back, and by the way, it is very light if you can't tell, like the amount of power that you get in this laptop. Yes, I know I'm freaking fill out right now. It's so light. Like, I can't even explain it. Anyway, something like this in the past would have been like, and then just like, ugh, you know, trying to move it around. Anyway, I digress. Over here, you have a combo uh, microphone, headphone jack, and actually it's not a combo, they're separate. Another USB 3.0, Kensington lock, and then if we look on the back, HDMI port, uh, that USB-C slash Thunderbolt, because it is Intel, a full-size ethernet, which has a little spring-loaded cover right here, which is nice to have and then our power port. Then on the bottom, as you can see, there's also intake vents uh, right here with massive rubber pads. Um, so it's not gonna go sliding all around on you. But in terms of aesthetics though, um, it's very thin, as you can see. It's only coming in a little over four pounds. It's very light. This has one of the optional wraps on it. So you can get the UV printed stuff. Um, you can provide your own design if you want, like they've done on the computer cases and laptops for me in the past. Um, this one here is actually a wrap. And I wanna point out, I actually damaged the wrap when I was flipping it around. I caught it on the edge and I lifted it up a little bit right there. Um, I'm probably gonna personally take the wrap off. This one here has kind of a weird texture to it, which looks neat like this. Uh, but again, this is just, this is an optional thing. You have different designs that you can choose from. Um, I might even do my own wrap on here because I kind of like the way the carbon fiber stuff looks. So I might, and I have extra of it. So I might even just do carbon fiber on here. Um, but I did sort of heat gun this and push it back down. I caught it on the edge with my hand as I was flipping it around and it pulled up. Something to keep in mind though, just like wraps on phones and such, wraps on laptops, if you're putting it in and out of a bag, um, you catch that edge, you could potentially peel it up. So that's worth pointing out. This is purely aesthetic. I did this, and I'm sure Origin's like, what the hell, man? But you know what? Wear and tear, it happens. Anyway, moving on. So we do have a, num uh, a keypad on the side here, a 10 keypad. It's a little bit condensed, but because it's a 17 inch footprint, we are able to have actual uh, 10 key over here. I personally use 10 key. I use 10 key all the time. I like having a 10 key, but because it's a 17 inch, you're able to um, actually fit that on there. It does have RGB. So because it's Intel 12th gen, it is running on Windows 11. Um, that's something to keep in mind. If we go ahead and open up our performance center, um, we are running, our CPU is an Intel 12900H. Now H has always been like their mobile variant uh, moniker on there. There's H, HK, Intel in the past, they've called it different things. 
So this is an Intel, Intel 12th Gen 1209H. If I sent change the graph to logical processors, you can see right there, we do have 14 cores and 20 logical processors. So it still is gonna have its E-core and P-core design that we're used to seeing this hybrid design uh, in Intel 12th Gen. The E-cores, I feel like, although when it comes to desktop, power efficiency and E-cores is one thing to, to be excited about, on mobile and laptop, the E-cores are, are gonna be great for battery life. If you're able to um, put it in low power mode and you really need to like, stretch out that battery as you're doing like spreadsheets or what, you know, if you're on a plane or something like that and you know that power bricks don't work on planes, even thin and lights, they just, plane outlets suck. You don't get any amps to charge your batteries. You can turn this into power saving mode, utilize the E cores only, pretty much disable the P cores and get a ton of battery life out of it. Now in terms of memory, memory we have 32 gigabytes of DDR5. 4,800 megahertz uh, in dual channel SODIMM. Now it is using Intel Iris Xe internal graphics for the uh, uh, built onto the CPU 12th gen, which means that when you are not utilizing the discrete graphics, which this has a 3080 Ti uh, laptop edition GPU, you're going to get better than the standard you know old HD graphics you would get with Intel, because the Xe graphics from Intel are much faster and also still very efficient. If you're on battery power, you still are gonna get decent playback, you're still gonna get decent um, browsing, anything that's actually GPU accelerated will utilize the XE graphics where needed, and then if you put in some sort of a 3D application, whether it be games or anything that's uh, heavily hardware 3D accelerated, then it's gonna switch over to the NVIDIA graphics card. If you're on battery though, it's gonna be in an extremely low power state. Um, so gaming on battery on a laptop is certainly never a good experience. It really cuts down the refresh rate. It cuts down the GPU horsepower. If you're plugged in, it's gonna utilize uh, whatever power profile you set up, which means more than likely it's gonna end up using the NVIDIA graphics. But it's nice to see latest gen CPU, latest gen memory, latest gen internal graphics, and latest gen uh, and highest tier mobile uh, discrete graphics from NVIDIA. So one thing that we can kind of take a look at here too, um, is the brick itself, because this is the other half of the equation. And as the laptops get more powerful, the bricks continue to get bigger again. This is a uh, chickeny, chickeny, I can't remember how to exactly pronounce this brand. I feel like almost every laptop we've gotten over like the last three or four years has been this brand, probably because of the reliability. Um, 280 watts, and it is 14 amps. That's why you're not gonna be able to use this on an outlet inside of a car, you're not gonna be this on an outlet in a plane, it's just, absolutely drawing too much power. But that also shows, you know, just how efficient laptops and gaming or desktop replacements, this really is like a desktop replacement, although it's very thin and very light. 280 watts is about as much wattage as a desktop 12900K under load pools by itself. And on top of that, we have a 3080 Ti. So obviously there's some power management and stuff there that you've got to deal with. Let's take a look at the control center real quick. So control center is where you'll be able to do stuff like manage your battery, um, the different kinds of modes that you can put it in for battery. Right now we're in high capacity mode, which is suitable for long-term uh, battery using environment. Balance is more suitable sometimes if you're using laptop uh, working, but no need to rely on battery power for a long time. And stationary mode is basically when you're just plugged in. Performance, so we have a couple different modes here. We have office mode, we have game mode. Some of the grammar on here I feel like could have been fixed. This mode is recommended. Fan speed is not allow adjustable. So game mode has its own predetermined fan curve and such and you can't adjust it. I just don't like that fan speed is not allow adjustable, but whatever. Just say fan speed is not adjustable. So enable fan control respective. So it's just saying, you know, turn that on and then you can use this is what it's saying. So right now we're just on the defaults, right? Which is basically zero RPM mode until it gets to a certain usage or temperature. So right now, if I hold this up to my mic, it's making absolutely no noise whatsoever. And that's really possible because of the 12th gen E core. So fan boost, if you hit that, just goes automatically to full speed. I'm gonna turn that off. We'll do um, game mode. You know, I'll leave it on game mode. So what we need to do right now is we need to set this guy up on power and we need to start with some Cinebench. So before we do Cinebench R23, I wanna show you that if you go into the performance setting and you go into SPC settings inside of the control panel, 
you can actually increase the power limits and stuff. So right now, power limit, power limit or level one is 80 watts, two is 80 watts, and then four is 215 watts. And then we can enable offsets here. Um, we can even overclock the GPU. I just was hoping there was somewhere here we had maybe some device information. Nope, that's not showing us temperature. System monitor, there we go. So I feel like they should put that more or less on like a main page dashboard, but multi-core, let's go. So I can hear the fans speeding up. Uses 100%, 79, 80, 81. Actually, it's not bad. We've had some 12th gen laptops that we took a look at that would like 99. <laughs> Just boom, 99. And considering how light and thin this laptop is, that means obviously you can only fit so much cooling in there. It has six performance cores, which have hyper threading for 12 cores, and then with eight E cores. So we have the full E core count that you would find on a 12900K desktop processor, but we have two less performance cores. That's how you're getting the 20 core instead of 24. A 16,114. Okay. That puts it basically right at a Threadripper 1950X. In 2016, no, 2017, when Threadripper came out. If you, if, if, I mean, I guess if we were told, hey, there'll be a laptop in the five years in the future that would be just as powerful as this and it will only weigh a few pounds, a couple pounds, like four pounds. I, I guess I wouldn't be that surprised given the fact that I've been around computers my whole life. But that just seems awfully quick to go from where we were to where we are. So what I wanna do now, look, it cools right back down pretty quickly too. I wanna go back over here and increase some of that power limit. Just max it out. And I'm gonna go here to fan settings. I'm gonna go to fan boost. Oh, look at that. Look at the temps now. CPU temperature high, so it's warning me it's pretty high. We uh, clearly are sending more power to that CPU. Hey, we went up to a 17.510. So from a 16,114 to a 17.510, what, 1,400 points? It's actually pretty significant. And we passed the Threadripper. I feel like it was also throttling to a degree. So it's currently at 3.55, 3.734. Here we go again. 4.0 all core, 3.8, 3.7. Yeah, see it's slow. It's adjusting very fine increments though. 3.55 all core. It's gonna say CPU temp too high, yeah. 94 is clearly our thermal, our thermal limit. Cause I, I really wouldn't feel comfortable running this every day like this. I just wanna see what we can get. No, 17.533 is just as fast. So it's faster than our, okay. See, you don't gotta go in and crank it all to 11. All that does is create more temperature issues. So it's landing at right around a 12600K desktop processor speed, which is a 17,699. So it's just a just tiny bit below that. It's not bad. It's really not, considering the fact that it's having to do it with a heck of a lot less wattage. More cores, but slower at this point. Um, let's put this all back to stock and then let's, let's take a look at what it is you guys actually care about, which is uh, right here, that RTX 3080 Ti laptop GPU. I'm curious as to where that lands in terms of a desktop equivalent. So for the 3080 Ti, I'm gonna test Time Spy and Port Royal. So Port Royal will give us that ray tracing um, benchmark score. Obviously with it being a shaved down laptop version, it's not gonna have as many RT uh, cores. So that will affect the performance. Um, Time Spy is gonna be a 1440p test. So Time Spy Extreme is technically a 4K gaming test as you can see. This is, uh, Time Spy is in 1440p native resolution. So let's just, I'll let it run the whole thing. Um, the CPU and everything. I wanna see what the combined score is, the CPU score, the GPU score. I'm gonna compare that with our chart uh, to see where that lands with the desktop variants. Uh, the 3080 was landing somewhere right around a 3060 Ti-ish, 3060, 3060 Ti. I'm hoping that this will land at least around a 3070. I know that sounds disappointing, uh, but it's just unfortunately the fact that they use the same name in the laptop variant. I, I, we've said this before and I'm gonna say it again. I wish they had called it something like a 3075 instead of like 3080. And then this would be maybe like a 3085 instead of 3080 Ti. I don't know. It's something that at least kind of gives you an idea of where the hierarchy is. They used to do that in the past, actually. They used a different naming scheme for laptops. Um, but in terms of tier, it is the highest tier available. Like it is the fastest graphics you can put into a laptop at the time of making this video. So I'm curious as to where it lands. You know, it's funny, This it, sometimes I forget this is a benchmark since when this came out, closer to the beginning of DX12, things were stuttery and slow because we were talking like 
700 series, 900 series-ish graphics. I mean, this is over 80 FPS right now. Um, 65, 67, some of these tests get really hard as they go through here, but it's so smooth, it's hard to, it's hard to, you know, remember, hey, this is a laptop. I mean, I was surprised when desktops were doing this. Uh, same thing with this CPU test right here. So it's gonna be measured in milliseconds. The lower the milliseconds, the better. But look how smooth this is. Actually, this one's FPS, I see the back. Extreme is milliseconds. We're getting 50 FPS. This growing thing is adding physics calculation on the CPU as it's expanding like that. And it's got this stuff going on up here. So it does drop in FPS as it grows, but it just, it bottomed out at 50 and it started at 79, or 40 and it started out at 79. So it's <laughs> insane how fast this stuff is. So we have an 11,835 score. Um, a graphics score of 11,842 and a CPU score of 11,800. That's very balanced. It's actually very balanced. So according to their estimated game performance, Battlefield 5 would be giving us in 1440p about 110 plus FPS. That's nuts. If I go ahead and compare this result online, it's better than 73% of all results. So this laptop is better than 73% of all of the Time Spy scores submitted. So that's a lot of desktops in there. So an 11,842, well, an 11,904 is a 2080 Super. So 3070 Ti is a 14,900. Oh yeah, so 3060 XC is a 9,015. Um, 3070 XC3 is a 14,000. So it's definitely more like a 3060 Ti or like I said, a 2080 Super. It's still a 16 gigabytes of VRAM as well. So definitely not doing bad there. Let's now see where we land with Port Royal because that's where we're gonna see a, a pretty interesting amount of load put on this because now those RT cores have to do something. So digging into our spreadsheet a little bit while Port Royal is running right now, uh, 3060 Ti Founders Edition is 11,880. So yeah, that means a 3060 Ti is pretty much similar to a 2080 Super, which is also pretty much the same rasterization performance and time spy as the 3080 Ti laptop. So you can see why like 3080 Ti, like a 3080 Ti desktop is a 20,483. So you see it's nearly twice as fast as the laptop variant. Um, that's the only thing I, I just don't like about the naming of the laptop SKUs. However, if you have a 3060, 3060 Ti graphics uh, in a desktop, this is pretty much just as fast. So if it lands anywhere around a 5100, that'd be a 3060. What? 75, 70, oh, I bet you this 3080 Ti laptop has more RT cores than the 3060 series desktop. I bet you anything, because a 5779 or excuse me, 7579. So that's right at AMD 6800. I know, weird numbers, right? There's really not anything landing right in that score range. A 3070 Ti is an 8886. Yeah, I don't really have anything on our chart that's even like right at that number. Yeah, 3060 Ti is a 6939. So it's definitely faster than a 3060 Ti. And a 3070 XC3 Ultra is an 8309. So it's like, a 3060 Super Ti desktop if it existed. It's be it is between a 3060 Ti and a 3070 on ray tracing. I expect, that, that surprises me. I expected it to have a bigger hit in ray tracing than it did in rasterization. So that's clearly, it, it's cut down more on just overall CUDA core strength than it is really on RT core strength. So that's actually a bonus if you're playing games that utilize RT cores. All right, let's go ahead and shut this down. Um, one of, we always run our tests prior to opening up the chassis in any way, because if I break it, then I can't run tests. <laughs> so I'm gonna flip this over, uh, bust out our iFixit kit, and I wanna see how many uh, slots we have for, if there's any, any SATA expansion, like can you put a SATA two and a half inch SSD in there? How many more M.2 slots? What does the cooler look like? How many heat pipes, all of that. So I always like to do these teardowns only because uh, one of the things I want to know as an end user is can I service it? There are plenty of laptops that absolutely do not allow the user to service them. Uh, they either need special tooling or this, they're, the way they're put together is completely you know, pain in the butt. Now this does appear to be basically a Tom, Tom Fang um, enclosure and that's not uncommon. That's just the way ODM, OEM works. 
which means this should be pretty user serviceable because we've dealt with this enclosure before. These are all Phillips head screws. And now I just gotta figure out best place to grab it without going and letting all the screws go flying because they are like sort of captiving in there and they're not coming out with the magnet. See, they're not coming out. So it's nice thing about the iFixit kit is the fact that it does give us little spudger tools and stuff to do that. Right here is usually a pretty good spot. Yeah, see right there, right by the USB. Look at that, no stupid amount of clips or whatever to have to deal with. It is metal on the underside. I don't wanna flip it over and lose my screws. It is metal on the underside. Here's our cooling system right here. We've got one, two, three, four, five cooling heat pipes. We've got our CPU and our GPU have dedicated fans. The heat pipes, as you can see, uh, do cross over. I believe this to be the GPU, this to be the CPU. Normally the GPU will have more um, heat pipes on it than the CPU because it's got more focused heat. This is our SODIM right here. It is serviceable. So as you can see right there, this is running Corsair Vengeance. It is serviceable if I just pop that over. There it is right there, pops right out. So if you, you know, depend, if you ever wanted to upgrade the amount of RAM you have by going in bigger SODIM sticks, or if you only have one stick, single channel, um, or you can go larger capacity, you can service. It's not like soldered in or anything. Here's our um, mini PCI Express, which is used for our wireless card right there. Here is our SSD. And you can see you have room right next to it for another SSD. In terms of the battery, you can see it looks like we've got one, two, three, four cells here. Looks like we could have even had a little bit larger battery on here. So at, at 7,900 milliamp hours or 91.24 watt hours, that's the typical rating of this battery. Rated rating uh, is 7,700 milliamp hours or 88.93 watt hours. The largest battery you are allowed to legally take on an airplane according to FAA regulations is 99 watt hours. So I'm kind of surprised they didn't squeeze in just a few extra watt hour battery or size, given the fact that they have the room here because the real selling point with 12th gen in a laptop slash mobile solution is those e-cores with the XE graphics, meaning you essentially have two computers. I and mean, if you think about this, you, t you, you basically have two systems here. You've got e-core and, and XE graphics. Right, so you've got e-core CPUs and XE graphics that can be used in low power mode to extend your battery life as long as possible. And then you've got your P cores and your NVIDIA graphics that can en enable uh, dynamically, obviously. You can go into the control panel too and set off dynamic mode where you can boot to a specific gra uh, graphics module, whether it be NVIDIA or XE, and then shut the other one off for even better battery life. It's just, it won't dynamically switch if you go to game. If you have XE enabled, you get XE gaming graphics. So you essentially have two systems in this. A very efficient one, and just a balls to the wall, give me all the power and melt down the brick version. Because you have those two modes, I would have liked to have seen a bigger battery because there is room here for one. You'll never find a bigger than 99 watt hour battery just because of the FAA flight rules. So yeah, as you can see, it's actually not entirely too crammed. You still have a lot of room. Another room, M.2, you got some space over here. Speakers are right here that are down fire. And you know what I love about this? Check this out. You see this foam right here? It's like a, the speaker is encased in foam. Do you know what that does? That should theoretically keep it from rattling. Have you ever heard speakers rattle on a laptop? Bling, bling, bling. We'll put this back together real quick. We'll test the audio, see how that sounds. That is, I guess I should have done that before I shut it down. That is typically the worst part of any mobile laptop slash solution is the speakers and the audio are just garbage. So let's see how this one sounds and then we will wrap this baby up. So I just turned on some basic coffee jazz music chill lounge channel on YouTube here. They're actually pretty loud. In that piano range for sure. Um, let's look at Bossa Nova here. It's not bad, it's really not. They're fairly full. I mean, you saw their size, they're very tiny. They're not rattling, the enclosure isn't isn't rattling. You can feel a little vibration of the speaker through there, but a lot of it is dampened. So while everyone else is bombarding your inbox with all of the crap that you can't afford or not gonna buy anyway when it comes to It's definitely so EQ crisp on the high end. A bit. Mids, mids and lows are always gonna suffer in a laptop. I mean, I think a lot of people with laptops and stuff would probably end up using headphones anyway, but it's extremely 
usable. Um, that's, that's the thing that usually surprises us the most when it comes to mobiles is how is the audio? Cause look, I know this channel is not exactly like hip with Apple, but I've, I mean, I've had laptops come through here that sound worse than my iPad. Okay. Uh, Apple tends to do a pretty good job at audio in their, in their MacBook Airs even. So there's no reason when you can s somehow squeeze sound out of a MacBook Air and yeah, usually it's shooting up out of the hinge again from the screen back in your face, right? That's how they kind of fire the audio. Um, they're using, obviously using a bounce acoustics to make it fuller. There's no reason when you have, you know, a good five, six millimeters here to not have something decent in there. So anyway, one last thing I want to do here is I'm going to take the wrap off because I want to see what's under here. Because of the fact that the wrap is an option, we need to see how it actually looks under there. Not just because I damaged it either. <laughs> like I said, I was throwing it around, okay? I did it for the gram. Just like I expected. Matte black with an origin logo. Just leave it like that. Consider this a review of their wrap. Uh, I, this is the first time I've had one of their wrap laptops. Everything in the past has been their UV printing. Just, you know, you need to keep in mind, like if it starts to peel up, you know, and you're putting it in and out of a bag, then it's just gonna continue to peel up more. And then this one had this like raised texture on it. I don't know if you can even see that, but that all the red lines were raised and dotted. So anyway, there we go. That's our look here at the brand new Evo 17S. We've looked at the Evos in the past. It's a, a product line they've had for a while and they continue to evolve as the hardware gets bigger and better and better. The laptop gets better and better without getting bigger. And that's what's awesome about it. All right, guys, I know laptops aren't for everybody, but I spent years on the road and I've lived the bad laptop life. I wish this existed when I was traveling for a living. So as always, a huge thank you to you guys for watching today's video and a huge thank you to today's sponsor, Origin PC, for sending the Evo 17 for us to take a look at. Make sure you guys check the description down below. You'll find a link to Origin PC where you can go and spec out your next build, whether it be a laptop, desktop, custom water-cooled PC, uh, or whatever it is. You can talk to one of their agents to help spec out the right system for you. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one as I continue to now pick off all of the little bits of debris.